We're going to see how to import files from FTDNA. First thing we need to do is start up Safari. Once Safari is started, we need to enter the address that we want to go to. In this case, we're going to put in www.ftdna.com. Next, we'll want to log in to our account on FTDNA. Enter your kit or user number. And your password. and tap on login. Next, we'll want to go to Family Finder and Matches. Actually, it's Chromosome Browser, pardon me. And in Chromosome Browser, we'll see that we have a Download All match, Matches to Excel, or CSV format. That's common separated values. Uh, this is what we want to use. So we'll click on it. And this may take a little bit. Uh, is, uh, this is a fairly lengthy file size. Don't immediately do anything because this file is not loaded yet. As long as the activity indicator is circling here, it's still loading, and you can see the little blue progress uh, indicator also. So here we are. It's loaded. Uh, when it finished loaded, you may have noticed up here there was an open in DNA match. Any file or any application that uh, has registered to be able to accept and process uh, comma separated value files uh, that will show in. Uh, but it disappears rather quickly. So what we need to do is take our finger and tap up towards the top and we'll see it again and then just click on it. We may have to do that more than once. Uh, there we go. This automatically launches a DNA match and we see a uh, import button. Uh, we have uh, several choices, 23andMe or FTDNA. This is an FTDNA file, so we're going to select FTDNA. Now, over the past couple of months, FTDNA has made a number of changes. So, uh, one of them was, to begin with, they didn't have a name in there. Now they do, and sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. So what we want to do is enter the name of the primary person. This should be the account holder. Uh, and that's the same name uh, that is going to be used for comparisons. So in this case, it's going to be uh, Jim Collins. And when we're done with that, we'll tap on the return key. And then we're going to say import file. Now when we have an activity indicator again showing that the importing is going on. Uh, the importing can again take some time. There's something like 26,000 matches in this. So we're going to let it go ahead and do its importing and, and see what happens here. It's, uh, it's, uh, it'll take a little bit to actually do that. I'm going to cut this video a bit so you don't have to stay here just watching the uh, activity indicator spin. We're actually running this on the simulator um, uh, so we can actually so we can actually get a video of it and you can see what is actually happening. The uh, import statistics page, the import statistics page will contain the file name, the data was created, the testing agency, in this case it's F for FTDNA, the number of lines uh, that were imported, and then uh, the number of errors if there are any errors. This actually has something like 17 arrows in it, uh, uh, 
I'm not quite sure as I haven't looked at the file. It's pretty big, <laughs> uh, but basically, uh, this this uh, these double commas here probably indicate there's a problem somewhere in in, uh, in that that there's an extra field or something in there that, that's caused it to go uh, a little bit wacko. Uh, so anyway, uh, but uh, you know, with only 17 errors out of uh, 26,914 rows, that's pretty good. So uh, we can see that and basically we're done. So we just click the done button, uh, which takes us back to our, our home screen. Nice to see if we've actually done anything. Uh, one way to do that is to click on the person tool. And here we see all the names of the uh, people that have been imported and you can scroll through them individually or you can uh, uh, key a name in here such as mine. Uh, we'll go in here, Jim, if I can type. Jim Collins, uh, and there it is. If we click on Jim Collins, we'll see the, the profile information uh, for Jim. Uh, now, I've actually gone ahead uh, and created what's called close relatives, which I'll explain a little bit later, uh, uh, associations. And, and they're basically persons that are close to me uh, and known to be close. Like these are all my brothers and sisters, uh, so I know they're close, <laughs> if you will. Uh, they're they're not the same thing as uh, siblings, uh, although they could those same people could be listed as siblings. Um, but in this case, uh, close relatives. It could be an aunt, it could be an uncle, it could be a, a, a sibling, if you will. It could be a first cousin that you know, or even a second cousin, if you will. Next thing we really want to do is take a look at our matches. So we click on the match uh, button uh, and what you really should do is always do a search with a primary subject. Uh, the primary subject is the person whom everyone is going to be compared to. So in this case it's going to be me again so we'll just see if I can find myself. So I'll just select myself uh, and, and there we are. Uh, we can then uh, actually select a list of names that we want to compare ourselves against. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, by not putting any names in there, it compares against everybody. If you put one name in there, it just means the only person you're going to compare yourself to is that one person. If you have uh, three, four, or five, it means you'll compare yourself to those three, four, or five persons. Uh, you can also uh, limit the search, uh, if you will, by surname. Uh, if uh, we have no surnames defined yet in this, um, but if you had surnames defined, uh, for instance, Smith, uh, if I, and I put uh, selected the name Smith, it would say only return me those matches uh, who have the surname Smith associated with them. Okay. Uh, we can also limit by the chromosome. Uh, we can say we can pick a particular chromosome or multiple chromosomes. Uh, in this case, we'll just pick two. Uh, make sure you type on the done. Uh, you can pick more than one at the time, uh, but in this case, we only picked one. And then the minimum CM uh, we can pick. Uh, we'll pick seven here for the heck of it. Uh, you can limit by gender. Uh, in this case, uh, off of an import. Uh, there are no gender indicators in the match record, so uh, you would have to put them into the person profile, so we won't use that. Uh, you can also limit by the maternal halogroup or the paternal halogroup. If those values are identified, again, in the uh, person profiles, if you will. Uh, match type, uh, you can, if, again, uh, the match type is the maternal. I, uh, I match my uh, my cousin on uh, my father's side, therefore it's paternal, you know, or I match my cousin on my mother's side, it's uh, maternal, and, and in some cases it could be both, if you will. Uh, again, those have to be put, those match types have to be put into the uh, person's profile. Uh, and then the testing agency, uh, if I only want to see 23andMe, I can select 23andMe, or only FTDNA choices, I can select FTDNA. 
or if I want to see them both, I can say all. Um, sometimes it's useful, although in this case it's not going to be particularly useful, to limit the selection based upon a particular file. Uh, in this case, uh, there would be no use in doing that since there's only one file. So when we're done with that, uh, selecting our criteria, and so our criteria was Jim Collins uh, for chromosome 2 only and all matches that are uh, where the CM is uh, 7 or greater. So you know, we just tap on the show matches and, and we get an answer uh, right here. Okay. Now one of the things that I did and had meant to do, uh, I need to show you, one of the defaults is, we're going to go back and look at the match criteria, is uh, exclude close relatives. So that search there that we just saw didn't include my brothers and sisters. And the reason for that is that if you include them, it tends to uh, fog up uh, the, uh, the results. You, they, they overwhelm everybody else because of the length of their CM and they cover everybody so you can't get a, an easily identifiable what, you know, what, what's over overlapping or what's not. Uh, just to show you, we'll, we'll run the same search and we'll turn this off and uh, now when we show matches uh, we should see, as you can see here, I've got my brothers and sisters here and, and they just they just overwhelm everybody because of the length of the CM. Um, all of these people are covered, if you will, by these uh, but it, it doesn't, it, it's somewhat meaningless, if you will. Uh, so uh, you, you want to eliminate them, at least in, in this case. And so we just go back uh, to the uh, match criteria, and uh, we'll set that back, and we'll do show matches. And there we are. Uh, there we have it. Uh, this is for uh, CM uh, chromosome two. And you don't want you don't want chromosome two. You want uh, actually uh, chromosome. Uh, three and uh, five for some reason, it's, you know, pick three and five, click done, and you want a minimum CM of uh, 10, so you should have a, let's make sure, let's scroll it up, we have a minimum size of, C, of 10, uh, click on show matches, and so there we have five, uh, the, the color coded ones indicate that they're overlapping, white uh, indicates that it's not overlapping. So as we can see here, uh, this one uh, starts at something like 56 million, goes to 67, almost 68 million. But the uh, one down here begins at 71 million to 82, and the next one begins at 86 to 103. So they're clearly not overlapping or sharing with anybody. To get the maximum benefit out of DNA Match, be sure to read the help documentation on how to set parameters in the search criteria.